Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing super, super well. So today we're gonna be talking about the disappearance of 29-year-old Bianca Carrasco. Now, if you guys have been members of the Familia for some time now, then you might remember that I had talked about Bianca's case a few years ago. At the time, there was very little coverage on her case and her family actually reached out to me and they asked if we could do an updated video together with more information, you know, with statements from them and just mainly to remind people that Bianca is still missing and that her family is still looking for answers. They are currently reaching out to other podcasters, to other creators, to news channels, you know, to anyone who will listen and help them spread the word on Bianca's disappearance. So if you guys already listened to her case a few years ago, I would really appreciate it if you guys could listen to it again now. Bianca's sister Giovanna has been so helpful in making this video, so I hope that this video does its job and it spreads awareness on Bianca's case and reaches a lot of people. I truly appreciate Appreciate you guys being here and with that let's jump right in and let's talk about what happened to Bianca Carrasco Bianca Zanet Carrasco was born on July 21st, 1986 and is originally from Odessa, Texas. She grew up with her mother Barbara and with her sister Giovanna, who was only 18 months older than her. Now, Bianca and her sister definitely did not have an easy childhood. Growing up, their parents were divorced and when Bianca was in the third grade, Barbara had actually sent her to go live with her biological father. Three years later, Giovanna followed Bianca and also went to go live with their father. Now, there was just a lot going on behind the scenes with the family and when Bianca was 16 years old she got pregnant and this was a huge shock to the family. I mean she didn't have a good relationship with her mom. She didn't really have a good relationship with her dad so she didn't have the support system that she needed to have this baby. Her dad actually suggested you know why don't you give the baby up for adoption? And this was a very difficult decision for Bianca to make. I just can't even imagine being in that type of position. So Bianca had to really think about this, but in the end, she decided to go through with the adoption. She gave birth to her baby girl on July 1st, and then just a few weeks later on July 21st, Bianca actually turned 17 years old. Now, it was really difficult for Bianca to talk about the adoption and to talk about her baby and just everything that had happened. But at the time, it just felt like that was a right decision for her child. After giving birth to her baby, Bianca went back to finish high school and then after that, she went on to go find her mom and reconnect with her. Because remember, at such a young age, Bianca's mother, Barbara, sent her to go live with her father, so they hadn't really had much contact since then. But now, Bianca was 18 years old and she wanted to reconnect with her mother, so she went to go find her and they slowly started reconnecting. Now, while Bianca and Giovanna were living with their father, he kept them apart from their mom's side of the family. So growing up, Bianca and Giovanna didn't know their mom's siblings or their cousins or really anyone on their mom's side. I mean, they didn't really know their mom that well either. So now that they were reconnecting with Barbara, they were getting to know her side of the family. And this is when Bianca met a man named Joe Daniel Carrasco. Now, Joe Daniel was married to Bianca's aunt, her mom's sister. So Daniel and Bianca weren't blood related. And again, Bianca Bianca didn't grow up with her mom's side of the family, so she never knew Daniel. You know, it's not like she grew up with him and saw him as an uncle or anything like that. She didn't even know that Daniel existed until she was 18 years old. However, within a year of meeting each other, Daniel and Bianca's aunt divorced, and that's when he started talking to 18-year-old Bianca. They began dating, and then Bianca ended up having three children with him and eventually married him. The family says that all of this just happened so quickly. I believe Bianca Bianca had all her children by the time she was 24. So this just all happened within a couple of years and Giovanna just wants to remind people that her sister was incredibly vulnerable at this time. I mean, just think about everything that had happened in her life. At 16 years old, she got pregnant. At 17 years old, she gave the baby up for adoption. Then she went to go finish high school. Then she went to go search for her mother who in a way just kind of abandoned her and just sent her to go live with her father when she was in the third grade. She finally reunites with her mother 
together and starts meeting, you know, all these people from her mom's side of the family. And then she meets this man named Daniel, who is 10 years older than her and her uncle by law, who then begins to flirt with her. I mean, it's just a lot. And Joanna just wants people to know that it's not as simple as like, oh, Bianca wanted to like steal her aunt's ex-husband or anything like that. Like, keep in mind, Bianca is 18 years old and this guy is 10 years older than her. Giovanna also just wants to add that the family never encouraged this relationship. I mean, both of their parents weren't really in the picture. You know, they were reconnecting with their mother, but it's not like they had a good and loving relationship where Barbara could step in and, you know, guide her daughter as to what decision to make. You know, the parents weren't really in the picture and Giovanna says that she did discourage this, but at the end of the day, Bianca is an adult and she made this decision. And of course, Giovanna loves her sister and wanted to support her and have a relationship with her. So it's not like she cut her out of her life just because she married Joe Daniel. Now, a lot of the news reports try to focus on the fact that Bianca was dating her ex-uncle and they make it seem like this is a crazy thing that she did and that she's a bad person for doing this when again, that's just not the case. And because so many reporters focus on the fact that Bianca married her uncle, the family just feels like it really diminishes the seriousness of the case. I mean, Bianca disappeared and something bad happened to her and that needs to be the focus of the investigation. So that's a little bit about Bianca's childhood and how she ended up marrying Joe Daniel. Now let's discuss who Bianca was as a person. She loved doing her makeup, she loved going shopping, and she just loved getting all dolled up. Her friends and family say that she was really sweet, nurturing, and just compassionate. She would say what was exactly on her mind, but she would say it with love and she would tell you how things are because she cared about you and, you know, wanted you to make the right decisions. She had a really close relationship with her sister Giovanna and they were pretty much best friends. Giovanna felt like she could just talk to her sister for hours and hours about anything. They both had children, so their children were friends, you know, they were cousins and it was just really nice for all of them to get together with their children and just have a good, loving family, especially because of how they were raised and how difficult their childhood was. Bianca also really loved to joke around. She enjoyed making people laugh and she was also really sassy. She was overprotective of her sister and of her friends. That's actually why she decided to become a nurse because she cared about people. Bianca studied at Odessa College and she eventually graduated from the Gallen College of Nursing in October of 2015. Now she did all of this because she was really passionate about nursing and about helping people but she also wanted to get this degree in hopes of making a better life for herself and for her children. Giovanna was so proud to see her sister walking across the stage and receiving her degree. It just shows how much Bianca overcame in her life. I mean, so much had happened in the past years and she just wanted to turn her life around and just be better. You know, she could have gone down such a different route. She could have hung around the wrong people. You know, she wanted to focus on her career and she did the work. You know, nursing school is not easy by any means. So she put in the work and she just absolutely loved her job and she loved to take care of her patients and her patients absolutely adored her. After graduating from college, Bianca ended up getting a job working at an oncology office in San Antonio, Texas, which was about five hours away from Odessa, Texas, where she grew up and where pretty much her entire family lived. Now, this was just a really good opportunity for Bianca, and as I mentioned, she was a very devoted mother and pretty much did everything for her children. So if getting this job in San Antonio meant that her children would have a better life, then that was the right move to make for her family. She accepted the job in San Antonio, and then she and her husband moved there with their three children. Now, Daniel worked in the oil field in Odessa, Texas. So when Bianca and the family decided to move to San Antonio, which again is five hours away, he continued to work at the oil field and he would basically just like commute to his job on the days he was scheduled, which is crazy. Like a five hour commute, that's a lot. You know, he would go on the days that he was scheduled, he would stay in Odessa for his shifts, and then he would go back to San Antonio on the days that he had off to reunite with Bianca and his family. Now, at this point, Bianca was happy with her job in San Antonio Antonio, you know, she was happy with her children. She was not happy in her marriage. According to her family, they noticed that on her Facebook page, she had changed her relationship status from married to divorce. So she was already moving, you know, the process along. I mean, changing your status from married to divorce on Facebook probably doesn't sound like a big deal now, but back then, I feel like it was definitely like a big statement to make. I feel like the fact that Bianca changed her status and just made it so public just showed how over the marriage Bianca was and how 
she just no longer wanted to be a part of it. Now, a reason for this could be because friends and family say that Daniel would feel threatened whenever Bianca would excel in her life. So for example, when she graduated from nursing school, everyone was really happy for her and they were just really proud at the fact that she put in the work and just did so well for herself. And there's this photo that was taken of Bianca at her graduation and her family looks at this photo and they just feel like something is off. When you look at Daniel, he doesn't seem too happy. You know, he's looking at her and his face just seems very like neutral. You know, it seems like he's not happy because his wife just got her nursing degree and the family feels like he looks upset because Bianca is excelling in her life and just moving on up and he doesn't want that for her. He also took credit for her going to school and accomplishing that, stating that if it weren't for him, she would have never graduated. And the family just says that that's so incorrect and Giovanna gets really mad when he says that because she just feels like he's discrediting Bianca and for all the hard work that she has done and how smart she is and how motivated she was to get this degree. You know, she did all the work herself, so she finds it really disgusting that Daniel tries to take credit for it. And again, there is this big age gap between Bianca and Daniel. So as Bianca started to grow up, she started to become more independent and she started to have a different outlook on life. She realized that she didn't want to be with this controlling man and she realized that she could do things on her own. She could have a life, she could have a career on her own and she didn't really need him. So Daniel didn't like that. He didn't like that she was growing up and starting to stand up for herself and wanting to be more independent. At the time of her disappearance, Daniel and Bianca were constantly fighting and they weren't really on speaking terms. Bianca did start to tell people that she wanted to divorce Daniel because she was growing up and she just realized that this wasn't the life that she wanted anymore. And this also is a little bit controversial and a lot of the news articles like to focus on this, but Bianca was seeing another man. And when Daniel found out about this new man, he was angry. Of course, he was upset that Bianca was speaking to someone outside of their marriage, but at the same time, they were in the process of divorcing and they weren't really on speaking terms and she had made it known that she no longer wanted to be with him but Daniel was not happy about this and he just didn't want to let her go. The Friday before she went missing Bianca went to work and told her co-workers about some threats that Daniel had made to her. For example she said well if I don't come back to work then Daniel did something to me. But she would say it in a joking way but at the same time it did concern her co-workers. I mean Daniel was so upset about this affair that he actually cleaned out their bank account and he gave Bianca back her wedding ring. Bianca actually texted her sister Giovanna just a few days before she disappeared and said, quote, Daniel emptied the account and opened another account without my name on it. So I have no access to money except my credit card, which is almost at the limit. I will not be controlled by a man and money. So as you can see, things were definitely not going well in the Carrasco household. A few days later on Sunday, May 1st, 2016, 29-year-old Bianca and her sister Giovanna had one final conversation. That day, Giovanna spoke to her sister at around 2 p.m. and it was a conversation where Bianca was pretty much venting about everything that was going on in her life and how she didn't know what was going to happen with her kids because Daniel wanted to have full custody of the children but Bianca also wanted to have custody of her kids. Now just a few weeks before this conversation Bianca had told her sister that she and Daniel were fighting about custody of the children and that Daniel had told her that he would be better off taking care of the children and that Bianca wasn't fit to be a mother, that she wasn't a good mother, that she wouldn't be able to support them financially on her own. And he basically like manipulated Bianca into agreeing to let him have custody of the children. Now, when Bianca told Giovanna about this, Giovanna was like, "Uh uh-uh, do not let that man tell you what you can and can't do as a mother and don't let him control your children. Like you're perfectly capable of taking care of your children and raising them and, you know, being financially responsible for them. So she told Bianca like, stand your ground and that's when Bianca told Daniel that she no longer was going to let him have custody of the children and that she was going to fight him on this. It's just a lot and she was venting to her sister about this on the phone on Sunday and she told her sister that on Friday she was actually going to go meet with a lawyer who would help her deal with the situation. So it was a really intense conversation but Giovanna says that Bianca did seem calm and that she had a plan of what she was going to do. You know of how she was going to divorce Daniel, how she was going to get the kids and And she seemed determined to, you know, make this work. The two of them ended the conversation by saying that they loved each other. So after speaking with her sister on the phone, the timeline of what happened next is a little bit blurry. You know, the only timeline that we 
have is the one that Daniel has given police in the family. Now, he says that later that afternoon, him and Bianca got into an argument. The argument just really wasn't going anywhere, so Daniel says that Bianca started to walk away. She just left the house and started walking in the street. Now, Daniel assumed that she went out to grab some fresh air, so he decided to grab their youngest child, walk over to his car, put the child inside, and then just drive away with the child to Odessa, Texas. So he starts driving, and as he's driving away, he actually sees Bianca walking down the street, and he drives right past her, makes eye contact with her, and then just continues heading to Odessa. Now, he sees that Bianca is like walking away from the house, and their two other children are still in the house, and the children are like not teenagers. Like, they're not, I believe the oldest was maybe 10 years old at this time. So the fact that he just drove away knowing that his children were left at the house unsupervised is really weird. Now, five hours later, Daniel finally makes it to Odessa, Texas with his youngest child, and they stay the night at his mom's house. The next morning on Monday, he goes to work while the youngest child stayed at home in the care of his mom. Now, moving over to Giovanna's perspective, she last spoke to her sister on Sunday at 2 p.m., as I mentioned. Well, it was now Monday, and she hadn't heard from her sister since then. Now, this just wasn't like Bianca, so she decided to call Daniel to see if maybe he knew what was going on. Daniel picked up the phone, and he just sounded really different. You know, Giovanna could just tell that something was off with him. So she asked him, what's going on? Where is Bianca? Why isn't she picking up the phone? And that's when Daniel explained to her about everything that had happened, about the argument that they had the night before, and how the last time that he saw her, she was walking away. Now, Giovanna listens to this, and she's so confused because she knows her sister so well, and she just knows that her sister would never leave the children behind. So she asked Daniel, you know, can you confirm that you saw her walking away with your own eyes? And Daniel literally says, yes, I made eye contact with her. I saw her walking. So Giovanna is just still so confused by this, and she tells him that if Bianca is still MIA the next day on Tuesday, that she's going to go call the police and report her sister as missing. Daniel actually tells her to not do this. He told her to calm down and to not get the police involved or anything like that, and Giovanna just found this to be really weird because keep in mind, Daniel is in Odessa, Texas with the youngest child. The other two children are back in San Antonio by themselves. Again, these are children, not teenagers who can fend for themselves in a way. These are two young children, and Giovanna was just like, this is getting out of control. The fact that this divorce and this fighting is just getting in the way of, you know, their children's safety is just too much. And she basically told Daniel, like, this needs to stop. And I don't really understand why Daniel wasn't more concerned at the fact that his two younger children were at home unsupervised. The next day on Tuesday, Giovanna has still not heard from her sister Bianca. She calls her job to see if she had shown up for work. And the oncology office tells her that Bianca did not show up for her shift on Monday or for Tuesday. Now, Giovanna is just freaking out at this point. I mean, she hasn't heard from her sister since Sunday. Her sister hasn't shown up for work for the past two days. I mean, what is going on? She just knew that something was wrong. So that's when she decided to call the San Antonio Police Department and report her sister as missing. Now, at the time, Giovanna was living in Houston. So the San Antonio detectives sent some Houston detectives to her house to gather more information. The detectives asked her, why hasn't the husband called us to report his wife as missing? And Giovanna said, I don't know. The officer was like, okay, well, give me his phone number. I'll call him. So Giovanna gives him Daniel's phone number and he calls Daniel right in front of Giovanna. Daniel picks up the phone and tells the officer that he has the wrong number. Giovanna just couldn't believe it. She was thinking to herself, like, why is this guy telling the officers that he is not Daniel? It was just very odd. And I totally get Giovanna's perspective on this. I'm sure anyone would be confused and worried if their sister went missing and then their brother-in-law was lying to the police about who he was. It was just all very weird. After this odd interaction, Daniel calls the police officers back and admits that he is Daniel. And then he also reports his wife as missing and gives a description of what Bianca was last wearing the night she walked away. After this, Daniel is pretty much forced to go back to San Antonio because his wife is now officially reported as missing. And on top of that, CPS also got involved because his two children were left unsupervised for the past two days. So he goes back to San Antonio to deal with the situation and he is also brought down to the police station for questioning. As we know, this is pretty standard for most cases. You know, when someone goes missing, officers usually look at the people closest to them. That's the husband, the wife, the boyfriend, the girlfriend, etc. 
So they bring Daniel down and he says that when he saw Bianca walking away, he felt like she was going to come back, that she was just going to go walk to clear her mind about the argument. But now that she had been gone for so many days, he felt like Bianca had willingly left her life behind, that she basically abandoned her children, her husband, her family, and just went off to go start somewhere else. Daniel also told the police about the man that Bianca was seeing and officers did go speak with this man but he was cleared from having any involvement in her disappearance. They continued speaking to Daniel a bit more and they stated that he was very cooperative and he was open to answering any questions that they had. He did agree to take a polygraph test but he was a little bit iffy about scheduling it. Like police would ask him okay what date can you come in for us to conduct the test and Daniel would kind of go back and forth between what days would work for him and in the end he actually refused to take the test stating that his attorney advised him not to. Detectives questioned him for the first few days of Bianca's disappearance but then he was never questioned again. Detectives acknowledged that marital issues between Daniel and Bianca could be a reason for her disappearance but they also state that it doesn't mean Daniel is to blame for what happened to Bianca. Now what is odd is that a few weeks after Bianca went missing Daniel moved back to Odessa Texas and put their house in San Antonio up for rent and then he kind of just stopped communicating with detectives. The family found this to be very odd because most people never move when a loved one goes missing. I mean they try to stay in the same house for as long as possible in case the person comes back. You know they even keep the same phone number or you know put a light on in the porch just in case. So the fact that he just quickly moved and rented the house out to someone else was really weird as if he honestly believed Bianca wasn't going to return. So detectives continue the investigation and they decide to go through Bianca's phone records to see if they could get a ping on her last location. They also went through Daniel's phone records, but that information has not been publicly revealed. Only information regarding Bianca's last location was released to the family and it showed that her phone last pinged near her house and that it was either turned off or died at 10.22 p.m. on Sunday, May 1st, the last day she was seen. They also went through her bank statements, but there was no activity on her checkings account or her savings account. As I mentioned, the police did speak to the man Bianca was seeing. They cleared him and they also spoke to a couple of other people that they thought might be involved, but pretty much everyone was cleared. The San Antonio Police Department did search Daniel and Bianca's residence using dogs and luminal testing. They also searched both of their cars, but nothing was found. Besides Daniel's statement and the phone records showing her last location near her house, that's pretty much all the evidence that detectives have in regards to Bianca's disappearance. I mean, she left her car behind, so if she did just disappear, then she just disappeared on foot, which seems odd. She also left all of her things behind. Her purses, her makeup, her personal items. I mean, it's not like she had packed a bag and was running away. So even though Daniel honestly feels like his wife did willingly leave, the evidence and just everything else just doesn't really point to that. Now, during this investigation, Bianca's family was very active in starting search parties, passing out flyers, and just getting the word out about her disappearance. Some of Bianca's neighbors got together and they conducted two different searches with volunteers. They also searched the wooded areas near her home, but again, nothing came from that. At one point, the Texas EcuSearch got involved, and I've mentioned this organization before. They are absolutely amazing. They help search for missing persons, and they conducted search parties near Bianca's neighborhoods. They utilized ATVs, dogs, and drones to look for anything, but unfortunately, nothing was found. Now, the way Texas EcuSearch works is they actually need to get permission from law enforcement to conduct the searches. They can only search what the police tells them is okay to search. And according to Bianca's family, they have asked the San Antonio Police Department to give the Texas EcuSearch new locations to go look in, but they haven't heard back from them. Just a week after Bianca went missing, her youngest daughter turned five years old and it was also Mother's Day, which is something that Bianca would never miss. She would never miss her daughter's fifth birthday and she would never miss Mother's Day and miss this big celebration. She absolutely adored her children and she would do anything for them. So the fact that she hadn't returned by then was very alarming to the family and they just knew that she didn't willingly leave. As of today in 2023, no suspects have 
have ever been arrested in the disappearance of 29-year-old Bianca Carrasco, and no one has ever been named a person of interest. Detectives have stated that it is possible Bianca simply walked away and just wanted to start a new life. You know, maybe she wanted to get away from her failing marriage, but they also state that it is possible someone else was involved. While detectives aren't sure if Daniel did have something to do with Bianca's disappearance, others feel differently about it. CBS 7 did a report on Bianca's disappearance, and they tried to actually speak with Daniel in person to get his side of the story, but he never responded to them. They reached out to the police department to see if they could get some more insight into the case, and again, police reiterated that Daniel was very cooperative. He has spoken with investigators and gave them as much information as possible about what happened. Eventually, Daniel's attorney reached out to CBS 7 and said that Daniel had nothing to do with Bianca's disappearance and that his main focus is on their three children. At one point, Dateline also tried to get in contact with him. They actually went to his house in Odessa and they approached him in his car, but he refused to make a statement. According to the Facebook page, Bianca's family stated that they do not have contact with Bianca's children, which is just absolutely heartbreaking. The fact that they can't even speak to their nieces and nephews or just comfort them because their mother is literally missing is just so sad and just so unfair. The searches and the news surrounding Bianca's case have died down, but Giovanna and one of Bianca's best friends have been working incredibly hard to keep the investigation alive. The family and friends remain hopeful that regardless of the outcome, they will get some sense of closure. Some people have just told the family to like leave it behind, you know, leave the investigation to the detectives and just leave it in God's hand. But as a parent, sister, sibling, friend, it's just so incredibly difficult to stop searching for answers for what happened to your loved one. Like if this was my sister, I would never stop. If this was my friend, I would never stop looking. Now the family and friends wish that the FBI could get involved, but in order for the FBI to investigate, there has to have been a federal crime committed. And to the family's knowledge and to the detective's knowledge, no federal crime has been committed. So that's why the FBI is not involved. The family did submit DNA as well as Bianca's dental records to use for identification in case an unidentified person is found or remains are found. You know, it's just been really hard for the family to get the investigation moving along. And Giovanna says that in June of 2016, she sat down with the missing persons agent who was assigned to her sister's case. And she also sat down with the homicide detective, which was incredibly painful. I mean, the fact that a homicide detective was there just reminded Giovanna that there was a possibility her sister was dead and that someone killed her. Anyways, she's sitting down with this missing persons agent and with this homicide detective. And she says that they told her that they believe Bianca's husband did have a part in her disappearance and that he probably did get some help getting rid of her. But that if they don't find Bianca's body, there's really nothing that they can do, which is so frustrating. You know, they were basically telling Bianca's family that they can't do anything until her body appears, which isn't comforting to know that the only way justice can be found is if Bianca is dead. That was just a really difficult conversation for Giovanna to have with these people. And, you know, the family just has a lot of doubts about Daniel's timeline. You know, it's not like there's surveillance footage that shows Bianca walking away or there's other witnesses that can confirm this. This timeline that we know of is literally only because Daniel said so. He's basically asking detectives and the family and the public to trust his words and people don't really feel that he's trustworthy. Something that Giovanna told me that was really shocking is that Daniel claims that the night Bianca disappeared, he drove to Odessa, Texas to go to work. You know, that's the alibi that he's given police and the public and, you know, everybody. However, Giovanna says that Daniel had actually quit his job just two weeks before Bianca disappeared. The divorce, custody battle, everything was just getting too overwhelming for him. And he tried to find a job in San Antonio so that he could stay closer to Bianca. So he actually didn't have his job in Odessa anymore. So why is he saying that he went to go to work when he was actually unemployed? The family is just so confused by this and they just want police to look into this alibi, you know, to talk to his old boss in Odessa and just confirm that he actually went to work or just figure out where he actually was the day Bianca went missing. They also just don't understand how he would let these two children just stay home by themselves for days, you know? If he knew that Bianca was missing on Monday, why didn't he immediately drive back and just go get his children and start searching for his wife. He also hasn't been a part of any search parties. He hasn't done any
many interviews. He hasn't been pleading out to the public to help search for his wife. Even if they were going through a divorce and a custody battle, that is still the mother of his children. He should still want her to be found and for his kids to have a present mother. Now, according to a statement that the family made on the Facebook page on August 8th of this year, Bianca's case has been through reinvestigation for the past two and a half months. Giovanna says that there is a new person assigned to the case and that this person has been really good at asking the family more questions about Bianca, about the case, and has been just digging deeper into the investigation. Because of this, the family is starting to feel optimistic and they're starting to feel like maybe they will get answers and maybe they will get closure. The family is also now working with an organization called Project Absentis and the mission of this project is to assist families of missing persons by serving as a liaison between the families, law enforcement, media, and the public. The service is performed at little or no cost to the family and the organization is made up of retired and former FBI agents, other law enforcement officials, public safety officials, and intelligence professionals who just want to assist the families of missing persons and locate their loved ones. Now they sound like an absolutely amazing organization and it seems like Bianca's family is happy with what they're doing and how they're handling the case. Bianca's family needs our support in keeping her case alive, spreading the word, and just letting the police know that people do care and that they're not going to stop until there's answers as to what happened to Bianca. The family has opened up a Facebook page where they post updates about Bianca's investigation, updates on walks or fundraisers that they're having to help with her case and you know things like that. So it's a very active page. They actually participate in this event called Honks for the Missing. The goal of this event is to sound the alarm for missing persons, victims of human trafficking, and for unsolved crimes. This event is hosted in Houston, Texas. So if you guys are in the area and you guys want to show up to give support to Bianca's family and to the other families of missing persons, you can learn more about the event on the Facebook page, which I will have linked down below. The family also has a TikTok, a YouTube channel, a Twitter, an Instagram. So I will link everything down below. That way you guys can check it out and just give all these social media pages as much support and love because that just shows the family that people do care and that people are listening. There also is a GoFundMe page open as well as a Venmo account that the family has made so that people can directly send them money. All of the money sent will be used for the investigation. They are trying to get legal assistance in Bianca's case. They're trying to set up billboards, you know, trying to print out flyers, things like that. The GoFundMe is currently at $60 and their goal is to raise $10,000. So I will definitely be making a donation to the family. If you can't make a donation, that is totally fine. You can still help by sharing Bianca's flyer, sharing her GoFundMe, and just sharing her story. Along with the GoFundMe and the Venmo account, there are also shirts that you can buy that can help support the cause. All of the money made from the shirts goes towards funding the investigation as well as reward money for any information as to where Bianca might be. So I will link the Venmo, the GoFundMe, the t-shirt website, everything down in the description box so you guys can check it out and buy a shirt if you guys want to show support to the family. I want to say thank you to Giovanna for helping me make this video and for taking the time to speak to me about what happened to her sister. It's incredibly difficult for Giovanna and for Bianca's friend that's helping behind the scenes to do these interviews and to speak about the case because every time they do, they're just reminded about how Bianca is still missing and how she hasn't been found yet. But Giovanna and Bianca's friend speak out because they want people to know who Bianca truly was. They don't want people to just focus on the fact that Bianca married her uncle and then just kind of disregard the seriousness of her disappearance because of that fact. And they don't want people to just focus on the fact that Bianca was speaking to another man while she was still married. You know, Bianca was more than this. She was more than her marriage. She was more than this new man. She was a wonderful sister, a caring friend, a loving mother to three children. She was a good person and she deserves to be reunited with her children and for her children to know what happened to their mother. And we also need to be careful about what we say in regards to Bianca's case because the kids are reaching an age where they now can have TikTok, they can have YouTube, you know, they can watch these videos about their mom and they can hear how people are only focused on the fact that she married her uncle and how she was seeing another man, etc. 
which is not good for the children. You know, Giovanna doesn't want her nieces and nephews to hear about these negative things about their mom. So I think it's important to take that into account when speaking about Bianca. And at the end of the day, everyone agrees that Bianca was an absolutely amazing mother and that she absolutely loved her kids and that she would do anything for them. Giovanna just wants to know what happened to her sister. She said, just let her pick up the phone and tell me she's okay. I miss her really bad, really, really bad. And I feel like I've lost a piece of me, like a piece of me is gone and I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to get through life without her. If you guys know anything about what happened to Bianca Carrasco or have any information regarding her disappearance, please contact the San Antonio Police Department at 210-207-7273. Bianca Carrasco was last seen on May 1st in San Antonio and she was 29 years old when she disappeared. She has long brown hair, brown eyes, she's 5'1 and 125 pounds. Bianca has a tattoo of the letter B on her right hip and she was last seen wearing colorful pastel leggings, a blue jean jacket, and she was carrying a pink Prada purse. Her family asked that you please share her photo, share her story, and share her name so that it can put pressure on the police and on anyone who might know what happened to her. Thank you guys so much for being here and for taking the time to listen to what happened to Bianca Carrasco. I appreciate you guys so much. I wish that this had a better ending. I wish that Bianca was found and reunited with her family, but unfortunately, that's not the case right now, and I just truly hope that her family does get answers soon. I mean, just speaking to Giovanna broke my heart. You know, I have sisters, and if this was something happening to one of them, I would never stop searching for answers, and Giovanna is out there every single day just talking about her sister and speaking to people about what they can do to help and just pushing the story out there. She says that she feels a little bit sad because at the beginning when her sister first went missing, she didn't know what to do. I mean, it's not like there's like a course or like a manual of what to do when a loved one goes missing. So she wasn't out there speaking to news channels or podcasters, you know, things like that to get the story out there or doing as much as she feels like she could have done. So now she's really just trying to push this case out there. You know, it's getting reinvestigated by this new detective. So hopefully that does bring answers and just new things. I mean, Giovanna is just so incredibly strong and so is Bianca's friend that is helping with the case. Both of them are doing such a good job of keeping Bianca's story out there. And again, hopefully by making this video, I can be a part of that and help keep pushing the case out there. But all right, you guys, that is pretty much everything I have. Thank you again so much for being here. Please don't forget to check out the latest episode of my podcast and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.